Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction or ED in emerging peptide therapies that help with ED. So erectile dysfunction is a common and distressing condition that affects millions of men worldwide. It's characterized by the inability to achieve or maintain a firm erection sufficient for sexual intercourse. ED can be caused by various factors, including psychological issues, some lifestyle choices, and underlying medical conditions. Now, you might have heard of ED, but you may not realize how common it is. Its prevalence tends to increase with age. So if you're in your 40s, you have a 40% chance of experiencing ED, and this risk increases by about 10% with every decade of life. Now, fortunately, there are several treatment options available to address ED, including pharmaceutical medications, lifestyle changes, and emergent therapies like peptide treatments. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the causes and traditional treatments of ED before really diving into the exciting potential of peptide therapies in managing ED. So what causes erectile dysfunction? Erectile dysfunction is a complex condition that's influenced by many physical and psychological factors. To understand the potential benefits of peptide therapies, it's really important to understand the underlying causes of ED. So psychological factors can significantly contribute to ED. Things like stress, anxiety, depression, even relationship problems can all lead to temporary inability to achieve or maintain an erection. Now, counseling, therapy, and stress reduction techniques are often effective in these cases. Another thing that contributes to ED is lifestyle choices. So unhealthy lifestyle choices like smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, or living a sedentary lifestyle, even poor diet can increase your risk of ED. Making healthier choices can really lead to significant improvements in ED. The next thing I want to talk about is underlying medical conditions. So there's many medical conditions that are associated with ED. Things that are like Cardiovascular disease, um, conditions like atherosclerosis can really restrict the blood flow to the penis. So high blood pressure and high cholesterol can also lead to ED. In fact, people with ED are more often diagnosed with a heart condition less than five years later. Another thing I want to talk about is diabetes. So high blood sugar levels can really damage blood vessels and nerves leading to ED. And the longer you have diabetes, the more likely it is that you'll experience ED. Other things like neurological disorders such as MS and Parkinson's disease can also affect your nerve signals, causing ED. Even mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, high stress levels can also play a role in your ability to maintain an erection. The next thing I want to address is hormonal imbalances. So low testosterone levels can actually contribute to ED. About 40% of men older than 45 have low testosterone, lending to ED. Other things that can affect ED are obesity, medications, and aging. So when you have obesity, that excess body fat can really lead to hormonal imbalances. And this is when your body can start to turn testosterone into estrogen. It can also lead to other cardiovascular issues, both of which increase your risk for ED. There's also medications like pain medications, medications used for BPH or an enlarged prostate, antihypertensive medications, medications used for depression and anxiety, and acid reflux that may have ED listed as a side effect. And like I mentioned before, aging. So ED becomes more common as men age due to just a natural decline in testosterone levels and changes in blood vessel function. So what are traditional erectile dysfunction treatments? So the treatment of ED typically begins with lifestyle modifications and if necessary, progresses to medical interventions. So traditional treatment options include lifestyle changes like quitting smoking, reducing your alcohol consumption, exercising regularly, and adopting a healthy diet. It also includes things like managing stress through relaxation techniques or even therapy. On the medication side, oral medications such as Viagra, Cialis, and Stendra are PDE5 inhibitors or phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors. They work by increasing the blood flow to the penis, which helps men achieve and maintain erections. There's also something called intracavernosal injections, where medications like aprostadil can be injected directly into the penis to induce an erection. And there's urethral suppositories that can be administered as a suppository inserted into the urethra to help with ED. Other things to consider would be vacuum erection devices, which are mechanical devices that create a sort of vacuum around the penis, drawing blood into the area and causing an erection. And a constriction band then is used to maintain that erection. And then for penile implants, where 
in cases other treatments are ineffective, surgically implanted devices can actually help men achieve achieve and maintain an erection. These are inflatable and there are also semi-rigid penile implants that are available. Now, while these traditional treatments are effective for many men, they really might not be suitable for everyone just due to some side effects, maybe some contraindications, or just simply personal preferences. So this is what's led to the exploration of novel therapies, including the use of peptides. So let's talk about peptide therapies for erectile dysfunction. In recent years, researchers have investigated the potential of peptides in addressing ED. These peptides work by targeting specific pathways and mechanisms involved in erectile function. So some promising peptide therapies for ED include melanotan-2 or MT2, which is a synthetic peptide that was initially developed as a tanning agent. However, it's gained attention for its potential to improve sexual function. MT2 stimulates the melanocortin receptors in the brain, which can lead to increased sexual desire and improved erectile function. Another thing is PT-141 or bromelanotide. Now, PT-141 is another peptide that targets melanocortin receptors, specifically the MC4R and the MC and the MC3R. It's been shown to increase sexual arousal and improve erectile dysfunction in both men and women. The next peptide I want to talk about is kispeptin or kispeptin-10. Kispeptin is a peptide that plays a role in regulating reproductive hormones. Studies have shown that kispeptin administration can increase testosterone levels and improve erectile dysfunction, making it a potential treatment for ED. Another peptide to consider would be thymosin beta-4 or TB4. Now, TB4 is a peptide that's shown promise in promoting tissue repair and regeneration. While not directly targeting erectile function, it may help improve erectile function by enhancing tissue health and blood flow to the penis. And the last peptide I want to discuss is vasoactive intestinal peptide or VIP. VIP is a peptide with vasodilatory properties, meaning it can relax blood vessels and increase blood flow. It's been investigated as a potential treatment for ED, particularly in cases where vascular issues contribute to the condition. Now, while peptide therapies for ED show promise, there are several challenges and considerations. So there's limited clinical data. Now, many peptide therapies are still being are still in the experimental stage with limited clinical data available on their long-term safety and effectiveness. And there's also individual variability. So the response to peptide therapies can vary among individuals, and not all men may experience the same level of improvement in their ED. Another thing to consider would be cost. Now, peptide therapies may be more expensive than the traditional PDE5 inhibitors, and insurance coverage may be limited. And the last thing I want to talk about is regulatory status. Now, the regulatory status of peptide therapies for ED can vary by country, and some may not be approved for clinical use. It's really important to recognize that peptide therapies for ED are still in the early stages of research and may not be suitable for everyone. Consulting with a healthcare provider is necessary to determine the most appropriate treatment approach, taking into consideration individual needs, and circumstances. As research in this field continues to advance, we can look forward to more effective and tailored treatments for ED, ultimately improving the lives of those affected by this condition. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. We love having you as part of our community. If you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media and have a happy, healthy week.